What's up YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr War Games, bringing you a new rendition for of course Dark Magician. So shout out to Chris Missing on this one. Um, he suggested this and I was kind of like, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I don't know if it's worth putting the money in to do it. However, through testing, it is a little bit slow, but it has a lot of control power. And that is obviously Dark Magician Elich. Now, without going into it too much before we get into the profile, I'm just going to dive straight into it because we're going to go back to using shorter, simpler profiles, but hopefully provide you with enough explanation um, that it all makes sense. And any questions, you can put them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. So, with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you do not miss out on any more upcoming content from the channel. With that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive straight in to the Dark Magician Eldritch Control profile. So, obviously, Dark Magician deck, you play triple Dark Magician. Now, you might be like, well, I'm not going to ever use free Dark Magician. Well, you'd be surprised, because what you're going to do here is you're going to be sending it 9 times out of 10. You can send it with Souls. You'll be sending it with Red Eyes Fusion. You kind of want free as well. It also gives you the ability to resolve Magician's Navigation um, if you want to. And it also helps you consistently get your Eternal Soul plays off, even if you don't have one in the grave from Red Eyes Fusion. We've then, of course, got Triple Magician's Rod. This is your normal summon of the deck. Now, Eldritch do not require a normal summon. Dark Magician does. Rod then ultimately gets you into pretty much anything. Circle, Eternal Soul, or even the Soul Servant. All three of those cards help you extend your plays further forward uh, and allow you to pretty much set up your combo plays to go with the Eldritch. Triple Magician Souls, so this is the card that kind of ties both of the decks together, purely because with Magician Souls you can easily send the Eldritch spells and traps to the graveyard, draw cards getting you into your rod, you normal summon the rod, that is your second piece to make your Verti Anaconda, and by that point you've already got your um, Circles or your Soul Servants or anything like that. The only big clash of the deck is that some cards say you, after you've resolved this card you can't summon anything apart from zombies and then of course you've got to remember that the cursed Eldland only lets you attack with zombies which again is absolutely fine because you're going to be sending those cards with Eldritch, the Golden Lord or with, with Magician Souls and the special summon locks you're only going to want to be doing during your opponent's turn um, and you've got to make sure that you're if you do it during your turn that they're the last to be resolved because then it means that you can technically resolve all of your eternal souls first. Then we've got the one of Oracle Mana. Again, I personally place over Dark Magician Gale because I'm not playing the Dark Magicians. The Dark Magicians to utilize Dark Magician Gale is literally if my opponent decides to destroy it. Whereas with Mana, what I can do is I can put Mana into the graveyard, give me the ability for an additional draw if I need to, but it also lets me protect my, well, sort of protect my Souls and Rod. Because if my opponent was to go Imperm on either of these or Valor on either of these, then I can bring back Mana um, and then even though I don't get the effect, which is a big downside of mana, that it doesn't negate the effect that targets it, um, I then still get an extender on the board, so that can then go into my Verte and go into Dragoon. Obviously Red Eyes, because you want to make Red Eyes Fusion, you want to make Dragoon, it's the most powerful card right now, so you'd be silly not to play it. Uh, and then of course two Golden Lords. You don't need to play free. Free can be very, very bricky. The fact you can actually search this card out off of the Golden Land as well, um, and he's just the boss monster. So what he adds is he adds the ability for Gustav Max if you need it and LaBelle, but it also adds the fact that you're giving your Dark Magicians one thing that they've slightly lacked outside of the extra deck in the form of a beta that can be 3k or more. Uh, and obviously being Golden Lord, the other bonus side as well, is if you bring him back with his own effect, he can't be destroyed by card effects flat out. So again, it's another card you can put on the board that if your opponent's like, right, okay, I'm going to target your Eternal Soul, destroy your Eternal Soul. See, the dog doesn't even like Eternal Soul getting hit. Uh, destroy the Eternal Soul, destroy the board. Whereas if you've got a Golden Lord that is protected with its own effect and a Dragoon, both those cards stay on the board. So it's really irrelevant for your opponent to even try to destroy Eternal Soul. Um, and then just by them deterring the, the destruction of Eternal Soul, you just go, okay, cool. Eternal Soul, bring back um, Dark Magician, Circle, Banish. So like it gives you a lot of protection and a lot more synergy than you would initially think. Uh, so that's it for the monster lineup. Again, it's not massively, it's not a massive heavy monster lineup because it doesn't need to be. Um, it is very straightforward and simple on this of exactly what you need. Your power plays come from the spells and traps that lead you into the consistency as well. 
So speaking of consistency, of course, Triple Soul Servant. This one lets you stack any card that lists Dark Magician or Dark Magician in its name um, to the top of your deck. And then if you've got Dark Magician on the field or graveyard or Oracle Manor in this particular sense, you can banish this card to draw cards equal to the number of those cards with different names. So 9 says out of 10, the play is that if you get to Soul Servant and you're able to resolve the Magician Souls and Red Ice Fusion. Um, so basically, let's, let's put it this way. If you were to go Rod... Uh, Rod into Soul Servant and you open up uh, Magician Souls as well, you ultimately end with a Dragoon plus a draw two. Um, and that's not to say that if any of the cards you've been able to discard off of the back of, um, Souls gives you additional draws as well. So you can either go full Dark Magician plays and then draw into your Eldritch spells and traps, or you can go full Eldritch plays and protect your board. Like it's just it's the, the synergy is there and it works really, really nicely. It just takes a bit of time to get going. Uh, Triple Dark Magical Circle, the stack effect is it's okay, but because you're not heavy Dark Magician, you don't have loads of targets to stack from the top of the deck, um, but it does give you that ability to stack what you need to, um, 9 out of 10 it's more so for the banish effect as well, because then you're just adding disruptions during your opponent's turn, and increasing your control ability, and your ability to play during your opponent's turn. The next card I'm actually considering cutting, but it's two Forbidden Droplets. Now, the reason I went with two Forbidden Droplets was the pure fact that I was like, you know what, I can't, in a particular format like this where you have to time your hand traps so perfectly in order to break boards or do anything with, um, it's, it's very difficult to do, a, to do a lot with. So I kind of went with that whole, the senses of, you know what, I want to win the dice roll, I want to go first. That's what my main objective is because I am a control deck. But if I don't win the dice roll, I want to have a card in my deck that I can easily just play. And because I play so many cards like Eldlixa, um, or sorry, Sanguine, Kukisador, Hequero, all the cards like that that I don't mind sending from my hand or field to the graveyard to negate, then Droplet was probably the next best thing. And considering that with the right two card combo of Souls and Rod, um, the remaining three cards you ditch off a of Droplet is absolutely fine because then you just go straight into Dragoon. Dragoon will then pop the rest of the board and then destroy the rest of the board. So Droplet, in my opinion, was one of them cards where it's like, right, okay, I can sit back, let my opponent play their turn without worrying and then go for Droplet because the deck space is a little bit tight, um, but that's kind of why I went with Droplet. I might consider taking this out for free Ash Blossoms just on that basis through testing wise, but I still think Droplet is the best kind of card that helps you go in second. And then, of course, one Red Eyes Fusion because you need to be able to make Dragoon. Uh, triple Cursed Ale Land. This searches out your Golden Lord and Elixir Spell or Trap. Uh, sorry, Golden Land Spell or Trap. And then if it is sent to the graveyard, you then get to send a Golden Land Spell or Trap, which then sets up their graveyard effects. Quite straightforward and simple on this card. Um, it's way overpriced right now. Do not, don't even consider buying it at that price. Wait. The card should be at maximum. At maximum, if you're desperate, 20 quid. Like at the moment, I think the lowest on eBay was like thirty-two pound, and I was like, no, nah, it's not, it's not worth it. So I've borrowed these off a friend. I'm not willing to buy into it, um, but it's something that you could look into to testing online, um, playing on Dollbook and stuff like that. And then of course you've got the one elixir of Black Awakening, one elixir of White Destiny. I, to be fair, I don't think I ever resolve these cards. Um, again, these are ones that are the ones that are like you, you can lock yourself into zombies. You have to be very, very careful as well. Um, so you only want to activate these after you've done all of your Dark Magician plays. But the other down, uh, the other good side is, again, if you send these off the Souls, you'll get an additional draw as you're setting up your Graveyard plays as well. So it's a bit of give and take. I never resolved them, never needed them, um, but they did put in the work when needed. For the track cards, Triple Eternal Soul. This is actually a little bit more important now, which is why we're maxing it out at free. You want to get to it, whether you draw it or search it off of your Magician Souls. Uh, not Magician Souls, sorry, Magician's Rod to set up your control plays, to set up the loop from the graveyard of Dark Magician. Um, and then, like I said, where this is usually a weakness in a deck, you're not actually putting monsters on the board that are like, okay, if I get destroyed, it's game over. You're actually putting monsters on the board that it's like, right, okay, if they destroy my turn of soul, they're putting a Conquistador in the graveyard for me. Or my Golden Lord can't be destroyed by card effects, so I'm fine on that one. My Dragoon can't be destroyed by card effects, they're just putting my Verte Anaconda in the graveyard. It's like, I don't really mind that, so maxing out an Eternal Soul is a must. The One Magician's Navigation, I actually found myself siding this out more times than not um, because it kind of shared the same level as uh, Golden Land Forever. But again, the idea was with Magician's Navigation, if I already had what I needed in my hand, like Eternal Soul and Circle, um, or even just Eternal Soul, I would search, Rod could then search me out Navigation, Souls can then send Navigation. And then what you're ultimately doing is you're setting up the perfect like blocker board. Because then you go, so through the exact same combo of Conquistador, Sanguine, and Eternal Soul, 
if you've got a navigation in the graveyard, not only are you getting a pop off Conquistador, a banish of a circle, but then you're also setting yourself up with a negation of uh, Magician Navigation in the grave. And if you don't send Magician Navigation, you want to set it, you can actually resolve it. Because you can just bring out two Dark Magicians from the deck, or you can bring out Dark Magician and Oracle Mana, or you can bring out Dark Magician plus a Rod or, or, or Souls as well. Uh, of course, for the uh, Eldritch Spells and Traps, you've got Triple Conquistador. This is obviously the pop one. Um, with Triple Elixir, search you out your um, Golden Lord or special on your Golden Lord. Obviously, this is the biggest choking point, in my opinion, of the Golden Lord deck for the pure factor that um, it, it, people now know that it's that big weakness. So they hold their Ash Blossoms back and then they'll go, right, okay, cool. Try to resolve this, Ash Blossom, and you go, ah, okay, cool. Now my Conquistador doesn't really do anything. Uh, and then, of course, you've got two Hequero. Um, right now, I don't think it's as massively important, but um, it, it will, you'll search this out over Conquistador if you know what you're playing. So if you're up against Dragon Link, you'll probably go, right, okay, I'll go for the Hequero. Hequero can then banish and deal with the graveyard rather than go for Conquistador. Uh, and that's it for the main deck profile. Uh, moving on to the actual, I'll show you a side deck as well at the end because the actual deck shouldn't really take much explaining. Uh, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, standard, what more do you need to say about that? Um, and then obviously to get into your Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, you do play your Predator Plant Verte Anaconda, straightforward and simple. For your lower links, you've got your Relinquish Anima, so this can be Link Karibo, this is just for those times when you want to link off the souls. Uh, you've also got Artemis, this is for those times when you make Selene, Selene brings back like Rod. Um, and then you can turn Rod into Artemis, and you could go into Avramax, but you could also go into Access Code. Uh, Umduct, better than Link Spider, just turn your Dark Magician into this, and it gives you a Wind in the Graveyard for Access Code, but it will also give you, um, sometimes this effect does come up, but it also gives you a Dragon as well. Not massively relevant in this build, but it does give you a couple of options. Uh, for the other Link 2s, of course, we've got the Nightmare Phoenix, um, but then you've also got your IP Mascarina, and your IP Mascarina can lead you into your Nightmare Unicorn. And obviously your Nightmare Unicorn is then going to be able to spin cards. Your Phoenix is going to pop back row cards. For the other Link 3s, of course, you've got your Selene. As long as you've got three spells in the grave, um, this will then bring back any Spellcaster. You can then turn the Spellcaster into any kind of um, Link monster you might need if you want to play Avramax instead of um, Access Code. But other than that, it will also then just ultimately give you Link 4 access into Access Code. Uh, your BLS, again, just an, another alternative boss monster. You'll play, you've got Golden Lord and you've got Dark Magician. So it's actually very easy to make him in the grind game. Uh, and then, of course, Axis Code, just to blow the board out and off you go. Uh, Underworld of the Goddess, again, it's just one of the tech cards that I'm playing right now because a lot of people forget about it. So again, as soon as I'm putting three monsters on the board, not that I'm doing that hugely consistently, but if I put three monsters on the board and my opponent completely forgets I've even got it and they're waiting to hold their Link 2 or one of their Negate monsters, I can then just link it away. Uh, and then for the XYZs, we've got the one Constella Pallades. This is obviously overlaying Hequero and Conquistador or two Hequeros. Uh, and then you've got your Gustav Max that can go into Labelle. So Labelle is literally there to deal with the stronger monsters that you can't deal with. Uh, Gustav Max is there for the 2k burn just to finish the game off. And obviously Pallades is quick effect to bounce a card. So again, you're giving yourself as many options as you possibly can in order to kind of deal with what your opponent's going to throw at you. Uh, for the side deck, the side deck again really does come down to personal preference and where, you, where you're where you going to play. Um, so if you're not particularly, um, depending on what you're facing, you can then adapt it from there. So uh, for my side deck, again, I went with more of a range because my locals is a little bit random in that sense. So I went with double DD Crow, um, straightforward to deal with the back row, double Nibiru again. Um, the only ones that I really tripled out on was triple evenly matched. Um, I just think Evilly Match is one of them cards that, whether it be a road deck, whether it be a combo deck, whether it be a stall deck, it can always be very, very useful. Uh, double Artifact Lancer, uh, double Ice Dragon's Prison, double Draw and Lockbird, and double Cosmic Cyclone. So as you see, I, I did a lot of two ofs, and it just went for more range. Whereas if you know exactly what you're playing at your locals, then you cut out certain ones that you feel you're not going to need, and you bump them up. So for example, if I was like, right, okay, Lancer is always going to be 100 times better to me than Drolls, you take the Drolls out, you put in a third Lancer, and you'd probably put in like a third Cosmic. Always make sure you've got back row hate, because there will always be some form of back row hate deck playing around at your locals. 
Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the profile. Uh, I hope you like this. I hope it's given you a couple of ideas on your own particular build. Like I said, it, it's probably more for those people that have already got the Eldritch cards that have kind of considered this as well. Uh, and like I said at the start, shout out to Chris Missing on this one. He was the one that suggested this to me. I wasn't, I, I kind of said, like, I don't think it'll work. Uh, I put it together, I tested it. It actually has some surprising synergy uh, and it actually puts in a lot of work itself. It's just a very, very slow control deck. So don't expect to go to your, oh, I say it's control deck. Like most of my games are pretty quick. Um, but yeah, like don't expect to go to your locals and be like, right, cool. I'm going to smash this in like three or four minutes because it's not going to happen. Um, but you know, yeah, it's definitely an option to trial it out and give it a go yourself. And then you can make your own judgment on it. Um, so test it out online first before you dive in and buy the, the expensive cards. Uh, and then you can kind of build off from the back there. But, as absolutely always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Until next time, as absolutely always, stay safe and happy dawning.